Hi, I'm Joseph Velasquez, printmaking professor at the University of Wisconsin Stout and co-owner of Drive-By Press. My first influences in printmaking emerged from my grandfather owning a nightclub in Texas. And in the nightclub, of course, they would produce all the playbills uh, for the shows and uh, the graphics for the uh, artists visiting. So as a child, I mean, I grew up finding these things through my grandfather's archives. And whether they be the wood type or whether it be the graphic images left over from the cuts that were printed or the actual posters themselves, uh, I grew up as that being a major graphic influence and a major printmaking influence on me. Uh, Drive-By Press was an art idea that uh, I developed along with my colleague Greg Nanny in graduate school. We both attended the uh, University of Wisconsin-Madison, and uh, Wisconsin-Madison is the number one printmaking school in the country. Well, my colleague and I have come up with the idea of accessibility and talking about um, who could afford fine art these days. And this is right at the height whenever the economy started crashing, when little galleries were busting, little bubbles were popping around the fine art world, and uh, the constant questions about the viability of printmaking because of the digital augmented printmaking, digital era, what's that doing to the fine art multiple? We were constantly asked these questions, and Greg and I had done our research, and we started talking about accessibility, and we talk about mobility. Printmaking is very immobile. You're talking about a two-and-a-half-ton piece of machinery that is a deterrent to most people walk in, it looks technical, they can't understand the science, I'm going to go paint. What we found a way to do is to mobilize it. We bought a printing press that we outfitted in the back of my truck, my pickup truck with a camper. And we started off in Madison, but we went up far north as Green Bay, also Detroit, all over Chicago. And we really wanted to take our press to different community centers that didn't have access to visiting artists, didn't know print history, uh, didn't have the opportunity uh, to have the same experiences we were given at UW-Madison. We wanted to be mobilized with what we take in that traditional process. So we started going around and we pitched it to our graduates, to committees, our thesis, about the democratization of art, about accessibility. And then all those questions about why does this need to be a multiple were then answered, because then we can take our, our prints to the people. The whole idea about this, you know, e pluribus unum, you know, uh, from one come many. And that's the same thing with printmaking. That's what it's all about. And it's about accessibility. Not one person being able to afford a $700 painting. It's about 700 people being able to afford a $10 print. We pitched to our thesis committee about letting us go to 13 schools with the Drive-By Press experience. Uh, we hit those 13 schools, and we received our, uh, our MFAs. But then in the emails that we followed up the weeks after that, this is right when we just graduated, we're asking ourselves questions that every graduates do, what's next? Uh, we got about 65 different emails from college campuses across the country that wanted us to come out and bring our press to. And many of the artists that we had heard about what we were doing, they began to send us prints. Where we started off with a collection of 150, we now have over 2,000. Where our main aim was to hit 13 schools, uh, we've now gone over 200 different college campuses across the country. Uh, in doing so, it also opened the doors for us outside of this as being an academic endeavor. When we started working at the college events, we exposed ourselves to different marketing opportunities that really took the idea from an art project to a full-blown clothing and apparel brand, which it is now. Uh, one of the ways it did is we met a marketing rep for R.J. Reynolds, uh, and that's a camel cigarette company. And it was at one of the college campuses during the career day where they're looking for free interns and uh, the Army's there trying to get kids to join, and credit card people are there trying to get you to go in debt. Every college campus has that. And then Drive-By Press was there selling T-shirts. And when we, that's how we would fund this whole idea is we would set up our shop, give these lectures, give demos. Then we'd go outside and we'd pull the press out, and we'd print T-shirts for students, and we'd have a line of 200 kids at 10 bucks a pop. We did great, and we'd hit three college campuses a week. So we were making money. We were able to do that, and our heart was really in it. And then all of a sudden we get these marketing reps for Camel Cigarettes to come up and say, could you do this for indie bands? Could you do this live for them? And could you go on the road with them? And Greg and I were like, oh, we don't know if we want to do this, about the impetus of the idea, having this purity of academic of what we're doing. And then they said, we'll pay you this much, and we said, absolutely, we'll do it. We have student loans. Our parents didn't believe us that we could make money with this whole art thing. And it began to happen. And we got to tour. We got to do these live shows with a 1,200-pound press, wheeling it into these different rock venues. We got to tour at the Black Keys, Spoon, Band of Horses, uh, Louis the Fifteenth, this band called Chromeo. And there was all these uh, other indie rock bands. We would do these small little tours with them. And we did that over the summers. And then we'd go back to the academic through the fall and the spring. Now we currently have a studio and shop in New York. We have a setup in Brooklyn and the Bronx. 
uh, we're producing now, we're drive by the DBP brand is now being sold to uh, different clothing outlets. Uh, we have uh, contracts with uh, uh, Urban Outfitters as well as some designers off Bryant Park where we'll print our wood blocks on fabric that we just roll up and we give to them and they make dresses. Where I work with Drive By now is I still do the academic visits. Uh, I'm not in New York, obviously, I'm in Menominee. Uh, what I handle is the part of the academic side. That's where my heart's always remained. But my graphic side still gets me paid, so I still send designs to New York. I'm still in that mix where it's happening. I still get a nice residual check from anything that happens there, but I don't have to go to any of the New York meetings or be involved with any of that day-to-day, which I don't like.